Hi there, Comets. We're going to be reading pages 21 through 39 today from the one and only Ivan. The Loneliest Gorilla in the World. When the Big Top Mall was first built, it smelled of new paint and fresh hay, and humans came to visit from morning till night. They drifted past my domain like logs on a lazy river. Lately, a day might go by without a single visitor. Max says he's worried. He says, I'm not cute anymore. He says, Ivan, you've lost your magic, old guy. You used to be a hit. It's true that some of my visitors don't linger the way they used to. They stare through the glass. They cluck their tongues. They frown while I watch my TV. He looks lonely, they say. Not long ago, a little boy stood before my glass, tears streaming down his smooth red cheeks. He must be the loneliest gorilla in the world, he said clutching his mother's hand. At times like that, I wish humans could understand me the way I understand them. It's not so bad, I wanted to tell the little boy. With enough time, you can get used to almost anything. TV. My visitors are often surprised when they see the TV Mac put in my domain. They seem to find it odd, the sight of a gorilla staring at tiny humans in a box. Sometimes I wonder though, isn't the way they stare at me sitting in my tiny box just as strange? My TV is old. It doesn't always work, and sometimes days will go by before anyone remembers to turn it on. I'll watch anything, but I'm particularly fond of cartoons with their bright jungle colors. I especially enjoy it when someone slips on a banana peel. Bob, my dog friend, loves TV almost as much as I do. He prefers to watch professional bowling and cat food commercials. Bob and I have seen many romance movies, too. In a romance, there is much hugging and sometimes face licking. I have yet to see a single romance starring a gorilla. We also enjoy old Western movies. In a Western, someone always says, this town ain't big enough for the both of us, Sheriff. In a Western, you can tell who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. And the good guys always win. Bob says Westerns. Are nothing like real life. The Nature Show. I've been in my domain for 9,855 days alone. For a while, when I was young and foolish, I thought I was the last gorilla on earth. I tried not to dwell on it. Still, it's hard to stay upbeat when you think there are no more of you. Then one night, after I watched a movie about men in black hats with guns and feeble-minded horses, a different show came on. It was not a cartoon, not a romance, not a western. I saw a lush forest. I heard birds murmuring. The grass moved. The trees rustled. Then I saw him. He was a bit threadbare and scrawny and not as good looking as I am, to be honest. But sure enough, he was a gorilla. As suddenly as he'd appeared, the gorilla vanished, and in his place was a scruffy white animal called, I learned, a polar bear. And then, a chubby water creature called a manatee, and then another animal and another. All night I sat wondering about the gorilla I'd glimpsed. Where did he live? Would he ever come to visit? If there was a he somewhere, could there be a she as well? Or was it just the two of us in the world, trapped in our own separate boxes? Stella. Stella says she is sure I will see another real live gorilla someday, and I believe her because she's even older than I am and has eyes like black stars and knows more than I will ever know. Stella is a mountain. Next to her, I'm a rock, and Bob is a grain of sand. Every night when the store closes and the moon washes the world with milky light, Stella and I talk. We don't have much in common, but we have enough. We are huge and alone, and we both love yogurt raisins. Sometimes Stella tells stories of her childhood, of leafy canopies hidden by mist and the busy songs of flowing water. Unlike me, she recalls every detail of her past. Stella loves the moon with its untroubled smile. I love the feel of the sun on my belly. She says, it is quite a belly, my friend, and I say, thank you, so is yours. We talk, but not too much. Elephants like gorillas do not waste words. Stella used to perform in a large and famous circus, and she still does some of those tricks for our show. During one stunt, Stella stands on her hind legs while Snickers jumps on her head. 
it's hard to stand on your hind legs when you weigh more than 40 men. If you're a circus elephant and you stand on your hind legs while a dog jumps on your head, you get a treat. If you do not, a claw stick comes swinging. Elephant hide is thick as bark on an ancient tree, but a claw stick can pierce it like a leaf. Once Stella saw a trainer hit a bull elephant with a claw stick. A bull is like a silverback, noble, contained, calm, like a cobra is calm. When the claw stick caught in the bull's flesh, he tossed the trainer into the air with his tusk. The man flew, Stella said, like an ugly bird. She never saw the bull again. Stella's trunk. Stella's trunk is a miracle. She can pick up a single peanut with elegant precision, tickling a passing mouse, tap the shoulder of a dozing keeper. Her trunk is remarkable, but still it can't unlatch the door of her tumble-down domain. Circling Stella's legs are long-ago scars from the chain she wore as her youth. Her bracelets, she calls them. When she worked at the famous circus, Stella had to balance on a pedestal for, <clears throat> for her to do the most difficult trick. One day she fell off and injured her foot. When she went lame and lagged behind the other elephants, the circus sold her to Mac. Stella's foot never healed completely. She limps when she walks, and sometimes her foot gets infected when she stands in one place for too long. Last winter, Stella's foot swelled to twice its normal size. She had a fever, and she lay on the damp, cold floor of her domain for five days. They were very long days. Even now, I'm not sure she's completely better. She never complains, though, so it's hard to know. At the Big Top Mall, no one bothers with iron shackles. A bristly rope tied to a bolt in the floor is all that's required. They think I'm too old to cause trouble, Stella says. Old age, she says, is a powerful disguise. A plan. It's been two days since anyone's come to visit. Mac is in a bad mood. He says we are losing money hand over fist. He says we are going to sell the whole lot of us. When Thelma, a blue and yellow macaw, demands, Kiss me, big boy! For the third time in 10 minutes, Mac throws a soda can at her. Thelma's wings are clipped, so she can't fly, but she still can hop. She leaps aside just in the nick of time. Puck her up, she says with a shrill whistle. Mac stomps to his office and slams the door shut. I wonder if my visitors have grown tired of me. Maybe if I learn a trick or two, it will help. Humans do seem to enjoy watching me eat. Luckily, I'm always hungry. I'm a gifted eater. A silverback must eat 45 pounds of food a day if it wants to stay a silverback. 45 pounds of fruit and leaves and seeds and stems and bark and vines and rotten wood. Also, I enjoy the occasional insect. I'm going to try to eat more. Maybe then we'll get more visitors. Tomorrow I'll eat 50 pounds of food. Maybe even 55. That should make Mac happy. Bob. I explain my plan to Bob. Ivan, he says, trust me on this one. The problem is not your appetite. He hops onto my chest and licks my chin, checking for leftovers. Bob is a stray, which means he does not have a permanent address. He is so speedy, so wily, that mall workers long ago gave up trying to catch him. Bob can sneak into cracks and crevices like a trapped rat. He lives well off the ends of hot dogs he pulls from the trash. For dessert, he laps up spilled lemonade and splattered ice cream cones. I've tried to share my food with Bob, but he's a picky eater. He says he prefers to hunt for himself. Bob is tiny, wiry, and fast, like a barking squirrel. He's nut-colored and big-eared. His tail moves like the weeds in the wind, spiraling, dancing. Bob's tail makes me dizzy and confused. It has meanings within meanings, like human words. I am sad, it says. I am happy, it says. Beware. I may be tiny, but my teeth are sharp. Gorillas don't have any use for tails. Our feelings are uncomplicated. Our rumps are unadorned. Bob used to have three brothers and two sisters. Human tossed, humans tossed them out of a truck onto the freeway when they were a few weeks old. Bob rolled into a ditch. The others did not. His first night on the highway, Bob slept in the icy mud of the ditch. When he woke, he was so cold that his legs would not bend for an hour. The next night, Bob slept under some dirty hay near the Big Top Mall garbage bins. The following night, Bob found the spot in the corner of my domain where the glass is broken. 
I dreamed that I'd eaten a furry donut. When I woke up in the dark, I discovered a tiny puppy snoring on top of my belly. It had been so long since I'd felt the comfort of another's warmth that I wasn't sure what to do. Not that I hadn't had visitors. Mac had been in my domain, of course, and many other keepers. I'd seen my share of rats as it passed, and the occasional wayward sparrow had fluttered in through the hole in the ceiling, but they never stayed long. I didn't move all night for fear of waking Bob. Wild. Once I asked Bob why he didn't want a home. Humans, I'd noticed, seemed to be irrationally fond of dogs, and I could see why a puppy would be easier to cuddle with than, let's say, a gorilla. Everywhere is my home, Bob answered. I'm a wild beast, my friend, untamed and undaunted. I told Bob he could work in the shows, like Snickers, the poodle who rides Stella. Bob said Snickers sleeps on a pink pillow in Mac's office. He says she eats foul-smelling meat from a can. He made a face, his lips curled, revealing tiny needles of teeth. Poodles, he said, are parasites. Picasso. Mac gives me a fresh crayon, a yellow one, and ten pieces of paper. Time to earn your keep, Picasso, he mutters. I wonder who this Picasso is. Does he have a tire swing like me? Does he ever eat his crayons? I know I've lost my magic, so I try my very best. I clutch the crayon and think. I scan my domain. What is yellow? A banana. I draw a banana. The paper tears, but only a little. I lean back and Mac picks up the drawing. Another day, another scribble, he says. One down, nine to go. What else is yellow? I wonder, scanning my domain. I draw another banana. And then I draw eight more. <laughs>